this this is where it kind of well like like the parents in and the structure kind of comes into play because I only knew my interactions with them and that was most of the time at school and on the way home. You know right. what I'm saying? After school, after the school, worst time to be yeah, interacted yeah, yeah. with them. But for the most part, I mean, again, I have family that lived on Moore Street. Most of the the, the fruit posse, but they they little they area from Moore like Street. Moore right. Street, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. So right. I have family on Moore Street. Not to say that you know it was any you know they they was afraid of them, but I guess they had a, a certain amount of respect to where they just somewhat left me alone. Like for the most part, like I never really got beat up by nobody from the fruit posse or whatever. But it was always a threat. Of violence, always. You know what I'm saying? From when we were kids, <laughs> it was always we were, a threat no, of violence. You, we were sure. little kids, and yeah. from the gate of yeah. of walking to school, kindergarten, first grade, we had to deal with fruit from the it's door. From, from the gate, people don't understand what it is to grow up in Camden. They don't. From the door, don't. we had to deal they with don't. fruit posse, and it wasn't they just don't. one family; it was like twenty of them. Hey, it was it was it was a lot of them. Um, some of them actually lived in the projects with me on the first floor. Um, the, the older cousin, I remember one, I remember one time the older cousin came and beat one of the dudes that we went was in class with up <laughs> at, at, at the school because I, I was telling him like, yo, man, you know, your cousin, they crazy a little bit. He's right. like, what? I'm going to go over there. And he actually beat him up once. <laughs> it was hilarious. But anyway, so I had to side note, you know what I mean? But yeah, the fruit posse, again, I had my cousins over there. They didn't really bother me too much, but it was always a certain level of, of, of um, threat of violence. Right. Where it was always like a certain level of, 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 of thickness in the air, where you were just like, all right, all it's going to take is one false move, and it's, it's lit out here. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Always. So you did Kramer from K to K to three. K. Well, actually, K through second grade. I K, started K third grade. Okay. okay. I started third grade at Sharp. At Sharp. Where is, where is Sharp? It's in Kramer Hill. Oh, Sharp is in Kramer Hill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, so you, I think it's Thirty Second Street, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. So third grade, you go to Sharp from what to what? All the way, all the way through to um, so I went to middle school. So oh, so from, from third, third to, to fifth. fifth. Yeah, exactly. So when you go to Sharp, mm -hmm. you're not dealing with Fruit Posse anymore. Nah. They kind of, they kind of, their area is kind of like East Camden, their side of East, the Moore Street side of East Camden, yeah. right? Yeah. So Sharp is in Kramer Hill. Yeah, Kramer Hill had their own version. I mean, everywhere you went, it all right. Was, it was so who'd you have version. to, who'd you have to deal with at, at, at Sharp? Um, so so, Thirty Third Street was like the drug set. Or okay. Whatever. But I had a lot of friends on 33rd Street. It was another one. I don't know if you remember the time it was a movie out, and they had a game called Trey Deuce in the movie. It was a, a West Coast movie. Really? Um, what was the name of that uh, movie? I can't remember what the okay. name of the movie okay. is. But anyway, that was their name, uh, Trey Deuce, <laughs> or whatever. For the uh, 32nd Street. 32nd Street. Right, yeah, right. so we had to deal, I had to deal with them, you know what I'm saying, for a little bit. But it was always, it was, all, it was always little kid stuff, you know what I'm saying? And... I learned a lesson from them. Like when I when I went from uh, Kramer to Sharp, I learned a lesson about people that sticks with me to this day. Okay, right. It was this one dude that was he had like bully energy. He was like my he was like a friend of me. You know what I'm saying? He okay. was like the first dude that I met when I went there. Okay, but he had bully tendencies, right? Okay. To where example, <laughs> what's a bully tendency? Um. Just being, just being like, like, Aggressive. At, at, yeah, at first is everything's cool, you know, respecting body space or, or, you know, just, just being all in respectful in the beginning. Okay. But then moving closer and closer to disrespect. You got know it. what I'm saying? Got it. Got more it. and more aggressive. Like stretching the bit. rubber band. Stretching it a little bit to see, to see yeah. how I'm going to respond. Okay. So, the, and that was, that was the lesson I learned because another person came too sharp. And I, and I was warning him. I was like, yo, you got to watch out for this dude right here. He like our friend, but he not really our friend. You know what I mean? He, right. he, he a little bully. But what I noticed is he didn't treat the other dude like he treated me. He, he all the way respected the dude because I guess he just saw something in him that made him say, I don't want no, I don't know no drama with this dude. I want drama with Sharon. Okay. So I learned from that to always be like, okay, it's not how you present yourself is depicts how people treat you. You know what I'm saying? People want to treat you by, based on the way that you carry yourself. He saw something in this dude that said he don't want no smoke, but he saw something in me that said he do want smoke. Okay. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. So I always, whenever um, a situation after that, I end up beating the dude up, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, the, the, the dude with the Shot him a fair one? I just shot him a fair one, and, and that was that, and I didn't have no issues with him no more. Okay. But I learned that you have to really present yourself in a certain manner, you know, to kind of command a certain level of respect. If not... Then you'll, you know, always 
get that bully energy from wow. people. Wow, so you learned and that early on. Very third that carried grade, into your child into like, your adulthood. The first month of third grade, I learned that super early. You see what I'm saying? Got it, got so it. So this it, got is just it. another example of what I'm telling you of like uh lessons growing up in Camden that other kids it's, I know some people didn't learn that till I was in the military. Right. And I'm I'm putting them on to that at 19, 20, 21. Okay. I learned this in the third grade. In the third grade. You, you see what I'm eight, saying? Nine, right, right, right. Because I lived in Camden for the most part. You know so I mean? already, elementary right. school, you had to deal with fruit. Yep. You had to deal with Trey Deuce. Yep. Now you go to middle school. Yeah, that six, was a whole... Did you was, do middle school at one school? I, all, six through eighth, I did at one school. All I right, where was that? Vets. And where is Vets? Which is... On the border of Cramer Hill, I guess it's technically Cramer Hill, but it's Cramer Hill and East Camden. Okay. Almost, because it's right when you go over the, the bridge. So from were the Federal people Street. from Fruit Posse who went to vets? No. Nah, okay, nah, so this was all, nah, so this, this it was, was mostly Cramer Hill kids. You got Cramer Hill, you got AV. Right, Abla Village. People, yeah, people walking up from AV. Right. And then you got some people coming from. Um, and what is Abla Village? Uh, uh, projects. Yeah, pro <laughs> no, no, projects. Yeah, projects in, in yeah. East Camden so, slash Cramer yeah. Hill, right? It's like it's like East Camden, but North Camden is right across the street. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? from so, AB, right, right, yeah, right, right. So you'll get some of the North Camden people that don't want to go to the North Camden schools. They, okay, you know, so you it's a mix. So you know and so for yeah. the first time when yeah. you went to middle school, it wasn't just your hood. Nah, now you got different like, hoods. Yeah. So you got Cramer Hill, a little yeah. bit of East Camden, a little bit of AV, yeah. a little bit of North Camden, yeah. all in one school. All in one. What school. was that like? All right. So this this is when like like um, well, I talk about it on a couple of different levels. This is when for me personally, this is when music started to become more of an influence in my life. Music has always been an influence from five years old, but around this time, you're talking about this is when Electric Relaxation and Tribe Called Quest. Pump Jump Up to Get Beat Down, Brand Nubian, um, uh, a scenario when that was out. So I was more into, you know, music. I was more into playing basketball, stuff like that. So, you know, it was just more people to kind of interact with on that level. And, and, most, for, the and most for you, part, for you, you yeah. were an underground backpacker Facts. type of guy. This, this like you didn't like from. the mainstream hip hop, Facts. really. Like you Facts. respected it, but you were more of that, that backpacker guy. So 100%. even in the high school, you were more into like uh, J. Rue. The yes. damages, yes. the uh, boot camp, the boot click. camp click, right, right, absolutely. So this is all that time frame. Um, Red Man, Onyx, Dr. Dre. You know, this is when all that was coming out. So you know, I'm coming, I'm coming up. You know, so you're I'm really into hip hop, middle school. I'm, yeah, I'm really into hip hop. I'm kind of like trying to figure out, you know, me, F figure out what I'm into. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. So. I've always been in my own, almost in my own bubble, my, like my whole life. I haven't, I, like, people be telling me about stuff that happened right, that went on right around me, and I be like, I was there? Like, I don't even remember, you know, <laughs> right, because right, I'm in my right. own zone. I've always been like that, you know? Okay. And I'm just, you know, I'm trying to figure out where the, where the, where the cracks and the crevices are so I could just slide through there right. unscathed, you okay. know what I mean? Okay. So it was it was just a heightened level of awareness. It definitely was, it got a little more violent. I, you know, a couple people got shot. You know what I mean? In middle school. In middle school. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? It's not funny. It's not funny at all. Then you had the high school kids coming back to middle school because, you know, you mean you I had, forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. The ninth them. graders who, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> wow. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, so you had all that coming and, you know, you had uh, people, you know, the, the older dudes coming with their cars or whatever to try to get with the middle school chicks or right. whatever, you know. So. We used to say that growing, <laughs> growing up. Like dudes like Excuse you and me. you and I, mm -hmm. we got the girls that were left over. Facts. Well, you didn't get the in middle school. Facts. You didn't get the girl that you wanted no, in high school. Not at all. You barely got the girl that you wanted. Yeah. The girls we wanted were taken by the older guys, and where we from, the drug dealers or the dudes with the cars, or they were just older. Period. Really? It's very rare that the baddest chick in school went with somebody her age. <laughs> very rare. This is a hundred percent. And you know, looking back on it, um, a lot of it had to do with survival. You know what I'm saying? A lot of it, you know, where we come from, like you said, single mothers, their mom wasn't there because they was working two, three jobs. Right. If they was doing that, if they wasn't cracked out. Right. So I'm looking back on it, and it was it was interesting how it all played out. All we saw was exactly what you said, where we was like, yo, I'm trying to get at this chick, and she's trying to get at this dude, and he grown. Right. You know, I ain't got a chance over there. Right. So, so middle school, you know, girls, for me, wasn't really like a big thing. It was like I started to get interested in them or whatever, and they, they you know, always got a certain amount of love, but it wasn't really like that. It was more so music, sports, and really just hanging out with my guys. You know, what uh, I'm let's saying? talk hanging, about sports. So you, you, yeah. you did sports. What did you What did you do uh, in middle school? 
In middle school, it was more more about basketball. Okay. Yeah, basketball and track. And track. Okay. Bas- track was really the main thing. Basketball was kind of like my first love, but I, I never played organized basketball. It, anything organized, it was track. You okay. know, it's been track my whole life, to be honest. Oh, so you were like an AAU kid. What was your specialty yeah, back in the day? Yeah. Uh, the 200, the 400, you know, the 400 hurdles, okay. or 440 hurdles, whatever. Um, What's your favorite thing? If you look back and you had to run a race right now and you were in shape, mm-hmm. what would you run? 200. The 200, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, 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 that's where you really get in. The 100 is a little too short. The 200, you got the curve. You know, and you know, when we was kids, we was like a little smarter than the average dudes. You know, you, that's a, that's a race. Like the the two and the four hundred are, are both races where you can actually strategize. It's more than just speed. Okay. You know, the one hundred is just speed. Just speed. And then eight hundred is like endurance. You know, it's like right. other stuff in there. Okay. But the two hundred and the four hundred, that's where you can really use strategy. Like, you know, if if I knew it didn't matter how tall you was or how fast well, you were. Well, it didn't because I knew. Like, you know, some people would save their all their energy for the last 100 or or they would save all their energy for the for the straightaway. But I knew if if the, if the wind was blowing a certain way, I could use centrifugal force. I'm, I'm working super hard on the curve and then it, the wind just pushing me down the down the end stretch. And I'm like, boom, I'm applying, you know, what I'm saying right, like strategy. Right, right, right. So that's okay. why I kind of like that, because it wasn't just about speed. You could overcome um, someone that's a little bit faster than you if you, you know, Put some thought into it. So let's talk about that.